Okay, so uh, I'm Brian Cardell. I'm currently from Egalia, and I'm here for Blink on 13 with some web friends. Yeah, I'm Ben Goodger. I'm also um, uh, passionate about the web. Currently working at Google, I uh, have worked on the web for a very long time through different eras. I initially as a hobbyist, uh, then at Netscape, then at Mozilla, and as I said, now at Google. Uh, excited to lead the web platform team and push the platform forward. And I'm uh, Darren Fisher, currently also at Google. Uh, uh, my whole career has been spent building, working on browsers, uh, about 20 years now. Um, continues to be an incredibly exciting area, and there's so much to do. Yeah, so we've all been involved with the web for a really long time in some fashion. And uh, we thought this is an interesting moment in web history because last year the web, by some accounts, turned 30. but uh, 30 years ago, it was an idea on a piece of paper that Tim Berners-Lee handed to his boss. Um, and so you could probably fit the number of people who knew anything about it into a small bathroom, maybe. Um, <clears throat> as things progressed over the next several years, people like us began to learn about it. But that's still a pretty small group. And I think you would have to be like somewhere around 40 or over. Um, so we have some unique insight and history and experiences that would be great to like get down and record and talk about. So maybe we could start with just like, what was your first browser? Mine was, uh, I don't know if it was no Mosaic or Netscape. Uh, I think it might have been briefly Mosaic, but I don't know, what about what about you, Ben? Uh, yeah, actually, so this is interesting. Uh, I, my first browser was Internet Explorer 2.0. Uh, and I used that because I didn't have an internet connection myself. I borrowed one. Um, and borrowing the internet connection, I was subject to whatever browser was on the system. And it was a Windows network. Uh, and that's what they had. I think at that time, uh, they were, they'd begun pushing Internet Explorer through onto, onto as a default part of Windows. Uh, and so that was kind of my first viewport into the world. Uh, and I remember at that time, it was kind of interesting because there was some newer tech that had just come out. And there were newer versions of the browsers, but I was kind of stuck on the older version. And so I kind of had that sense of being stuck behind the, the compatibility curve and that there was some some new stuff out there. And I couldn't quite get it yet, but I was excited to be part of it all the same. Darren, what about then, you? Yeah, myself, um, I have to really think back of a bunch of sort of fuzzy memories, but I was in college uh, at the time um, and I certainly have a pretty vivid memory of encountering Mosaic on a deck workstation in the mechanical engineering labs. Um, didn't really know too much about it at the time or why I should use it um, or you know why it was interesting. My, my first experience with the internet was email and that was that made a lot of sense to me, but I hadn't yet really figured out why I should care about the web. Yeah, this is, I think, a really interesting thing for people today because the internet and the web are just sort of synonymous and they're they're just like background noise. Like we, everybody just sort of like assumes that they were there and that a lot of things were very similar. But uh, like you, you mentioned that you learned about it in a lab. Um, <clears throat> I don't know, Ben, how you learned about it. For me, I learned about the web in a bookstore. In rural Vermont, uh, I was living in rural Vermont and I, I used to wander a bookstore. Like we used to go to physical bookstores once upon a time. And uh, I read about it and it, it actually came with some physical media. And I put it onto my computer and then I decided, well, maybe I should get one of these internet connection things. That seems pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, what a, what a different thing, right? Uh, that like people, People didn't even know about the web. And how we learned about it was largely through physical media. Uh, like one of those was uh, through AOL, which began pushing. There were lots of services bringing people online that were kind of actually, in a way, at first fighting the web. The web was going to be like one really small part of what you do. Um, like Darren, I think you actually later on worked at one of those, right? Yeah, well, uh, Ben and I both worked at AOL for a stretch. I started there in 2000. Um, my, my father actually worked at AOL for longer. And so at home, you know, I saw we used AOL, um, you know, before that um, CompuServe. But I, I mean, I was, at, I was in university at this time. But when I would come home, I would see these things. And, um, uh, you know, uh, 
my journey to AOL though um, was sort of um, a because my father worked there, so I took an internship at AOL, um, and I just so happened to land on a team that was building a set top box um, that happened to be built using the Gecko code base, Mozilla code base, and so then I became aware of that code base even, um, and um, subsequently when I thought about getting a full time job, I I got interested in, in going to work at AOL, but actually to go work on Netscape, uh, largely because I wanted to, um, that internship was on the East Coast, but I actually wanted to be on the West Coast back in California. Um, and um, I didn't know much of, at all about browsers. I really didn't know very much at all about web technologies. Certainly didn't know anything about JavaScript. Um, and I started though at AOL um, at Netscape working on the networking team uh, where I could read man pages and. And, and, and learn about BSD sockets and try to and read RFCs and try to uh, fix bugs in the HTTP stack. So that's how I kind of got going in this whole space. I think it's interesting, like how young all of these things were and how they were all kind of happening at the like more or less the same time. And like we we didn't know how what we were doing with any of it, honestly, because um, like software only in the mid '80s, a, a few years before the web. Did we even decide that you like you could copyright it? <laughs> um, like that was actually a question. Could you? Because most things were like um, more about like research and discussion, and things were more open. Uh, so I think that that was like a really interesting change and a, a neat fact. I don't know if you either or both of you know this, but um, you know Tim Berners Lee when he created the web. He, he didn't want to build a web browser. Um, he thought that there actually were perfectly good things that did almost everything that he wanted, but just didn't understand URLs. Um, and so he famously at a party tried to give the web to a guy named Guy Ritchie who made some software, uh, which was basically a web browser. It even called its markup language a, a hypertext markup language. Um, and it looked very, very similar. And uh, it, so the web was almost born as a shrink wrap software project, which people would have bought, which is interesting, like a web browser that you would buy. People did um, buy Netscape for Stretch, right? Well, I was just going to say, yeah. So the interesting thing there is because Guy Ritchie rejected that idea, uh, which he has a great TED talk you can, you can watch if you haven't seen it, called The Day I Turned Down Tim Berners-Lee. <laughs> Uh, uh, because he did that, uh, we entered this new era where free software was also very new is kind of a pushback of that shrink wrap, uh, copyright, the software idea. And so the very, very early browsers were sort of that. And then mosaic came along and it, it was licensable. And then we got Netscape and both of you wound up working for Netscape, right? While it was still, a, a a product that people would buy, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly, I might have a, a shrink wrap copy of it around here somewhere, uh, you know, down in the, the the basement, in the corner of the basement. Um, it was kind of interesting, you know. Like, I think as I'm thinking about how I learned about it, like how I should knew, know to like open a browser or do something. Like, I think, right. you know, like Darren, you know, going back in time, like, I was aware that there were these um, information portals out there. I, know I grew up in New Zealand, uh, and there was this thing called CompuServe Pacific, uh, and they advertised extensively on TV. Uh, and so I knew it was there. I didn't actually have it, uh, but I kind of was aware of what it was. Uh, and then kind of around the, the early part of the 90s, there was a lot of discussion about the information superhighway uh, and how that would connect the whole world together. And there would be these amazing things that would happen, and it would transform business and all of that kind of stuff. No one quite knew like what concretely that meant, uh, but there was a lot of a lot of press coverage. You, know, you heard about it everywhere, and so eventually it was like, well, here's this tool that gives you a window onto it, and and, and what is it? You know, how do I figure that out? And so for me, you know, my journey to to Netscape was kind of it was interesting uh, because I started, you know, first of all exploring the web, seeing this limitless frontier of interesting stuff. Uh, and just spending hours and hours crawling around. And, and, and then like, I remember going into a, uh, just like looking at a magazine rack and there was a magazine there called NetGuide. Uh, and I was like flipping through it. So yeah, cause it wasn't, it wasn't Google at that point. 
Uh, and so like you did kind of have to find these entry points uh, to, yeah. to help you structure your um, activity. Uh, and so in the back of that magazine, there was a little section there for how to make your own web page. And it had some links to sites to go to that told you how to do that. And then it was like kind of mind exploding. Like not only was this thing you know, kind of infinite and rapidly growing, but I could contribute to it too. Uh, and then I went and did that. And I had no technical skill at all. Uh, I was just like interested in it uh, and was able to start to like find some HTML, modify it, uh, and iterate on it until I got something that kind of looked like I wanted, uh, which was tremendously empowering. And then discovering JavaScript and like figuring out how to make things more um, interactive. And it's through that that I developed the skill to eventually contribute to Mozilla uh, and end up working at Netscape. And so it's kind of a, um, I think it's an incredible thing. Uh, and um, yeah. Yeah, I think that that's like a almost universal story for a lot of people. Like it, uh, this uh, idea that you could view the source, mm -hmm. and then you could change just a little bit, and you could see what happened. And you don't, you don't need compilers, and you don't need like you don't need a lot of deep technical knowledge. You can even get a lot wrong. Like you you can get a lot wrong. It could be actually nonsensical even, and you'll still see a result. Mm -hmm. It was like. So powerful. I gave a talk, and at the slide I have on that is the castaway, like, I have created fire. Like, that's really what it felt like in a way, isn't it? Like, uh, it's hard to explain to people today, like, what a. I, I don't think that there was anything like that up until that point. That um, the whole idea of software development, where, like, as you say, like, you needed an expensive compiler suite, you needed to have, you know, more computer science knowledge, you need to have, you have started kind of. With the whereas like for me interested in just like the way things look, uh, UI building stuff like that, like the the amount of investment needed to get to that payoff was so small, um, and that so it was kind of very easy to be to get into the state of flow. And even if you know because I didn't have a very fast computer or you know that that type of thing, it was possible to do that. So that to me that was like the most incredible thing about the the platform. Yeah. I, I remember um, very much uh, copying uh, some code for a um, you know a counter, a visit counter, mm. uh, to put onto my own website. Uh, if you remember how many websites used to have the visit counters, and I, yeah. I, I remember copying that, not really knowing what I was doing, but I had I determined that that was the piece I had to copy out and into my own page, and it worked. And I was like, yes. <laughs> it kind <laughs> of feel like out. a feel like a god for a minute there or something right it's just it's so it's so empowering really it's like it's hard to explain i think because uh like we've a little bit gotten away from that uh we don't have to the web still has that superpower but uh for a lot of people they feel the barrier is higher in in a lot of things today um but I think that it's just like amazing because we do still have this like very low barrier and the more we uh, help people see that and understand that. I think it's just like continuously empowering. Yeah. And I, I think another thing that's like really, really interesting about this is that if you recall, uh, well, so let's talk really quickly about um, Ben, you said that you got uh, Internet Explorer. So uh, at the time, uh, Netscape, their IPO, was sort of like the first web IPO. And it was astounding. Like it was, oh my God, people said the web is like, it's a thing. Like it's a money making thing that could happen. It's amazing. Um, and there were books written and articles written, it dominated press coverage that uh, Bill Gates who had become uber rich uh, off of Windows had sort of missed the boat, right? Like everybody said, well, I mean, it's, he could not possibly catch up now, right? Uh, but then Internet Explorer came along and it was pushed with the OS, which was like a thing that had never happened before. And I think it got a lot more people on the web, right? Like it, it was an interesting development. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, there's there's power and access, but then I think I mentioned before as well, like because I was was stuck with a browser that was a little bit behind the times. Like by the time I was using it, they'd already released Internet Explorer three. I just didn't have the ability to install it um, uh, on on the device. But you became aware that there was this choice out there because mm -hmm. the other thing that happened in the time because there was this very vigorous 
competition between both Internet Explorer and Netscape. Um, you know, not just on product user experience, but also on the platform. Uh, mm -hmm. The platform was being tugged in all of these interesting ways, in very incompatible ways. Uh, and web developers, you know, they embraced the the browser that they had built with, and then they advertised that on their their website. So if, another thing, in addition to the the uh, visit counter, is the best viewed in in IE or best viewed in Netscape and like those types of things. And you see those, and you're like, what is this? What is this other thing? Oh wait, there's another browser. Like, why would I choose that? Oh, it has this feature. And so it's kind of interesting then. And I remember like around that time, sort of uh, late. 90s at that point, 97, like Netscape had just released um, Netscape 4, and it had this new thing, uh, dynamic HTML, DHTML mm -hmm. with layers, uh, and that plus JavaScript uh, was like the next thing, because the web experiences, I think, were, were richer than a traditional Windows application, you know, with your Battleship Gray, you know, forms, and you enter text in boxes. Web applications were more interesting to look at. But with uh, dynamic HTML, it became this thing that where they were, uh, just magic in a way that you hadn't seen maybe except for you know CD-ROM type experiences. Um, and there were, I remember dropping, encountering this website that was about, uh, it was paid for by the city of Vancouver that was positioning their city as, as like Vancouver 2000 or 2020 or something like that. And it was, it heavily used layers for everything, like their whole like overlays and menus and windows and other stuff. And it was, again, like kind of head exploding to see that you could build something that rich with this tech stack. Uh, and at that point, it was like, yeah, OK, it's important to find a browser that is on the cutting edge, not just of, of features, but also for a platform. That's super interesting. I, yeah, I, I, you know, it, back then, I wasn't as like very savvy about the actual web platform itself. But as a user, I certainly remember when I came to prefer Internet Explorer over Netscape. I remember um, on my Windows machine being able to configure Internet Explorer to be just like have less UI around the web page and, and to be just cleaner and lighter and simpler. And I just like, why wouldn't you use this? It seems better. And and I just like didn't even think about it. Um, uh, you know, however, um, for me in, in university, I wasn't I was often not on a Windows machine and much more often on a Unix or or as it came to be Linux machines. Um, and then Netscape was just so essential. Um, and it, I think actually that experience at school, um, a lot of the work was done on MATLAB and you could get MATLAB on a Linux machine, which meant you could actually work on, do your work at home and not have to be in the lab. And again, having a browser, being able to access things through Telnet, being able to email, all these tools became so, so essential to like not having to trudge into the lab <laughs> at night or, or the middle on the weekend to do my work. And um, and I, I and through that, I grew an affinity for open source as well and, and the whole Linux sort of world. And then to me, like um, ultimately getting to work on Netscape felt so satisfying because I, I it was a way to make that that world better, to make Linux uh, desktop better. And that, that, that sort of thing that I had, that had made, made my life better, I wanted to work on making it better. And that, I think, I think there's like such an inter, in, such an interesting interplay of many of the things that we've said so far. Because if you look at, um, so lots of people coming in with lots of ideas in these sort of like really limited platform in in the early days, and uh, people trying to push the envelope. Like when you give people a thing, they begin to explore to really push the edges of the envelope and and see what they can do with it. Um, and they learn a little bit more and they get a little bit more ambitious and like the things that they build are interesting. And sometimes the things that sort of win are like very unpredictable. And I think that the web is like that in a lot of ways. Like it, it, if you look at, at the time, uh, the Microsoft, inter, uh, Microsoft, what was it called? Uh, Outlook Express was on it like it, it came with your os basically um yeah, I saw a lot of times when i clicked on mail to links right yeah yeah uh so actually if you look at the the experience of that it looks more or less like a modern email client like it, it was comparatively like a rich application and it looked like everything else on your on your os but it like it was very rich in interactions and things that you can do and then like we built these really 
comparatively basic um, email clients, but they had this special sauce that, that was like the thing that you were just saying, Darren, which is like, you could get to it from anywhere, right? And then it had this other aspect that you were mentioning, Ben, which is like, like designers got interested and they were like, ah, but we can do these things that you can't easily do on, on, uh, uh, on the desktop OS. And I think it, it's, it's just amazing to have watched that evolve and, uh, and win. Just to riff on what you just said, I mean, the fact that you can push out new software so easily over the web, as opposed to back in the days of shrink wrapped, uh, you know, software, you know, please, will you take my, buy my new CD-ROM is a lot different than um, here's the new version of my website. You know, uh, it's, it's really transformative and for so many uh, in, in so many ways. And then on top of that, there's the idea that if I find something that I like, that I can send it to you, you know, by a chat or email or, you know, that, that type of thing. And then you can yeah. drop right in. And so you can see the web is having created this sort of viral moment, the idea of the viral Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. Because of the power of the link. Uh, Absolutely. Um, so we're almost out of time. Uh, I think that a good way to close this out is to talk about uh, the rise of Internet Explorer and uh, its extreme dominance. And um, the project that both of you worked on inside of Netscape was called Mozilla. Do either of you want to say like what that was, uh, like what Mozilla stood for, sort of? Yeah, I mean, so the, you know, I joined uh, Netscape, you know, after contributing to Mozilla, and the thing that appealed to me about that, and it was actually, you know, as I understood the the strategy, and there's a great documentary, by the way, that you can watch about this called Code Rush that you can find on on YouTube somewhere. It's a PBS documentary that was filmed back when Mozilla was forming. Uh, but it was basically the idea of can we, you know, because this is really a global thing, can we interest people who are passionate about the web around the world to come and help? build that. And that was a really rallying call for me because like Darren, I felt like Internet Explorer was actually a better product. It had better features. You know, I could configure the UI the way I wanted and that type of thing. And, and Netscape kind of sucked. It was janky, slow. It didn't have the right features. And yet at the same time, being this thing that you could actually change, it was really, that was really powerful uh, concept. Uh, and so from from my perspective, that was, that was the call that I heard. That was the purpose, you know, trying to keep this thing uh, you know, available, accessible to all. Um, and yeah. Like I, like I said, I was very selfish. I just wanted a browser that worked well on Linux. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but no, I think um, the ideas around open source were really amazing. For me, I was struck when I first started working at Netscape, um, how I could like check in and, and, and code and introduce bugs and it would get triaged by somebody in a totally different time zone. And then the next day I'd come in and there was a bug report for what I screwed up, and that was that was fantastic. The turnaround time and the collaboration around um, the open source project was really remarkable. And I found that, um, especially with Mozilla, maybe I don't know, uh, it, it just had such a diverse uh, group of people who were contributing and contributing in so many different ways. Um, you know, certainly people writing code, but a lot of people helping diagnose issues and helping with the reporting of bugs and helping with you know, documenting things and so on. And you see projects like MDN that have been so successful in that with allowing for that open collaboration. Uh, and it's just amazing some of the things that um, that, that came around that, that sort of um, environment, right? And I think, yeah, I think partly because the, so much of the, the team at Netscape was operating, you know, in the public that, you know, the, and then they had this new server that you could go to where you could see all, you could kind of see the org structure of the company uh, as someone on the outside. And you could go and find, oh, I want to work on UI. Like I'll go to the, the cross-platform front end XPFE group and I'll find like the, the engineers that are working on that there and I can start a thread and ask a question. And, you know, within 24 hours, usually they would respond. And it was like, wow, this is cool. Yeah, I think that uh, it's amazing that the, the web in essence uh, through that switch from Netscape to Mozilla, uh, really helped reshape the entire software industry in in a really big way, creating open source, like the modern idea of open source. So, um, it just as a thing to wrap up, it's amazing that we have come full circle, and today all of the browser engines are again 
open source and free software. So amazing. That's an amazing story to me. Uh, and I, I think it's really great for all of the reasons that you were that you were saying. Um, yeah, so I, I think mean, go ahead. it's a large project, um, you know, building a browsing a browser engine and the, the sort of uh, the way that a community of people can can really um, make them work better. You know, it's it's it, it is it is remarkable. I wonder if it's like interesting to like in wrapping up to say how big a project it is. Like I don't think that most people understand quite that. Uh, I think Chromium is currently at about 25 million lines of code. Uh, <laughs> WebKit, WebKit is, I think, 17 million. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there are there are really really big projects with uh, thousands of person years worth of investment yeah. into it. It's and really remarkable, amazing. Remarkable computer science problems um, and a vast array of complexity. Uh, and challenges and things to uh, work on. It's 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 quite endless in in that regard. There's and a huge wonderful of complexity under the hood too. Like I remember when I was a designer, like I wanted to be able to produce something that was like a sheet of glass, you know, that had sort of a blurred background where I could move that around and have the background blur. And like that just wasn't possible in the late '90s. But we've got to a place now where because of that technical sophistication that we've built up, where you can actually do effects like that. Uh, and so yeah, the web has gotten more awesome with it, is increased you know, complexity, more lines of code, but from a developer and designer perspective, it's it's tremendously powerful. Yeah. Okay, I think that we're up against our time. So I just want to say thanks. This was like really, really fun. I think it was a good conversation. Thanks both Thank of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Great chatting.